HMS Glorious was the second of the Courageous class battle cruisers built for the Royal Navy during the First World War, designed to support the Baltic project championed by the First Sea Lord, Lord Fisher. They were very lightly armored and armed with only a few heavy guns. Glorious was completed in late 1916 and spent the war patrolling the North Sea. She participated in the Second Battle of Heligoland Bight in November 1917 and was present when the German High Seas Fleet surrendered a year later. Glorious was paid off after the end of the war, but was rebuilt as an aircraft carrier during the late 1920s. She could carry 30% more aircraft than her half-sister Furious, which had approximately the same tonnage. After recommissioning she spent most of her career operating in the Mediterranean Sea. After the start of the Second World War, Glorious spent the rest of 1939 unsuccessfully hunting for the German cruiser Admiral Graf P in the Indian Ocean before returning to the Mediterranean. She was recalled in April 1940 to support British operations in Norway. While evacuating British aircraft from Norway in June, the ship was sunk by the German battleships Scharnhorst and Neisenau in the North Sea with the loss of over 1,200 lives. Design and Description during the First World War, Admiral Fisher was prevented from ordering an improved version of the preceding renowned class battle cruisers by a wartime restriction that banned construction of ships larger than light cruisers. To obtain ships suitable for traditional battle cruiser roles, such as scouting for fleets and hunting enemy raiders, he settled on a design with the minimal armor of a light cruiser and the armament of a battle cruiser. Glorious had an overall length of 786 feet 9 inches, a beam of 81 feet, and a draft of 25 feet 10 inches at deep load. She displaced 19,180 long tons at load and 22,560 long tons at deep load. Glorious and her sisters were the first large warships in the Royal Navy to have geared steam turbines. To save time the installation used in the light cruiser Champion, the first cruiser in the Royal Navy with geared turbines, was simply doubled. The Parsons turbines were powered by 18 Yarrow small tube boilers. They were designed to produce a total of 90,000 shaft horsepower at a working pressure of 235 psi. During the ship's abbreviated sea trials she reached 31.42 knots. The ship was designed to normally carry 750 long tons of fuel oil, but could carry a maximum of 3,160 long tons. At full capacity, she could steam for an estimated 6,000 nautical miles at a speed of 20 knots. Glorious carried four BL 15-inch Mark I guns in two twin hydraulically powered Mark I asterisk turrets, one each fore and aft. Her secondary armament consisted of 18 BL 4-inch Mark IX guns mounted in six manually powered triple TI Mark I mounts. These mounts had the three breeches too close together and the 23 loaders tended to interfere with one another. This rather negated the mount's intended purpose to provide a high rate of fire against torpedo boats and other smaller craft. A pair of QF 3 inch 20 hundredweight anti aircraft guns were fitted abreast the main mast on Glorious. She mounted two submerged tubes for 21 inch torpedoes, and 10 torpedoes were carried. World War I. Her keel was laid down on 1 May 1915 by Harland and Wolfe at their Belfast shipyard. Glorious was launched on 20 April 1916 and completed on 14 October 1916, during her sea trials in November 1916. Courageous sustained structural damage while running at full speed in a rough head sea and had the damaged area stiffened shortly afterwards to prevent a recurrence. Glorious did not suffer any similar damage and did not receive her stiffening until 1918. Upon commissioning, Courageous served with the 3rd Light Cruiser Squadron of the Grand Fleet. After most of the 1st Cruiser Squadron was sunk at the Battle of Jutland, the squadron was reformed with Courageous's flagship along with her sister ship Glorious. 
She cost £1,967,223 to build. Glorious received a half a dozen torpedo mounts, each with two tubes in mid-1917, one mount on each side of the main mast on the upper deck and two mounts on each side of the rear turret on the quarter deck. On 16 October 1917 the Admiralty received word of German ship movements, possibly indicating some sort of raid. Admiral Beatty, the commander of the Grand Fleet, ordered most of his light cruisers and destroyers to sea in an effort to locate the enemy ships. Courageous and Glorious were not initially ordered to sea, but were sent to reinforce the second light cruiser squadron patrolling the central part of the North Sea later that day. Two German Brummer-class light cruisers managed to slip through the gaps in the British patrols and destroyed a convoy bound for Norway during the morning of 17 October, but no word was received of the engagement until that afternoon. The first cruiser squadron were ordered to intercept, but were unsuccessful as the German cruisers were faster than expected. Second Battle of Heligoland Bight Throughout 1917 the Admiralty was becoming more concerned about German efforts to sweep paths through the British laid minefields intended to restrict the actions of the high seas fleet and German submarines. A preliminary raid on German mine sweeping forces on 31 October by light forces destroyed ten small ships and the Admiralty decided on a larger operation to destroy the mine sweepers and their light cruiser escorts. Based on intelligence reports, the Admiralty allocated the first cruiser squadron on 17 November 1917 with cover provided by the reinforced 1st Battle Cruiser Squadron and distant cover by the battleships of the 1st Battle Squadron. The German ships, four light cruisers of two scouting force, eight destroyers, three divisions of minesweepers, eight spabreacher and two trawlers to mark the swept route, were spotted at 7.30 a.m., silhouetted by the rising sun. Courageous and the light cruiser Cardiff opened fire with their forward guns seven minutes later. The Germans responded by laying a smokescreen and this made spotting targets very difficult. The British continued in pursuit, but lost track of most of the smaller ships in the smoke and concentrated fire on the light cruisers as opportunity permitted. One 15-inch hit was made on a gun shield of SMS Pillar, but it did not affect her speed. At 8.33 the left-hand gun in Glorious S forward turret was wrecked when a shell detonated inside the gun barrel. At 9.30 the first cruiser squadron broke off their pursuit so they would not enter a minefield marked on their maps. The ships turned south, playing no further role in the battle. Glorious required five days of repairs to right the damage caused from the premature detonation and from her own muzzle blast. She fired 57 15-inch and 213 4-inch shells during the engagement. The ship received flying off platforms on top of her turrets in 1918. A Sopworth Camel was carried on the rear turret in a Sopworth one and a half strutter on the forward turret. She was present at the surrender of the German fleet on 21 November 1918. Glorious was reduced to reserve at Recife on 1 February 1919 and served as a turret drill ship, being also flagship of the Rear Admiral commanding the Devonport Reserve between 1921 and 1922. Conversion. The Washington Naval Treaty of 1922 severely limited the amount of capital ship tonnage and the Royal Navy was forced to scrap many of its older battleships and battle cruisers. However, up to 66,000 long tons of existing ships could be converted into aircraft carriers, for which the courageous class ship's combination of a large hull and high speed made them an ideal candidate for conversion. Glorious began her conversion at Recife in 1924, but was towed to Devonport for completion, and she was recommissioned on 24 February 1930. During the ship's post-conversion sea trials she reached 29.47 knots. Her 15-inch turrets were placed into storage and later reused during World War II for HMS Vanguard, the Royal Navy's last battleship. 
Her new design improved on her half-sister HMS Furious which lacked an island and a conventional funnel. All superstructure, guns, torpedo tubes, and fittings down to the main deck were removed. A two-story hangar, each level 16 feet high and 550 feet long was built on top of the remaining hull. The upper hangar level opened onto a short flying off deck, below and forward of the main flight deck. The flying off deck improved launch and recovery cycle flexibility until new fighters requiring longer takeoff rolls made the lower deck obsolete in the 1930s. Two 46 by 48 foot lifts were installed fore and aft in the flight deck. An island with the bridge, flying, control station, and funnel was added on the starboard side as islands had been found not to contribute significantly to turbulence. By 1939 the ship could carry 34,500 imperial gallons of petrol for her aircraft. Glorious received a dual-purpose armament of 16 QF 4.7-INCH Mark 8 guns in single high-angle Mark 12 mounts. One mount was on each side of the lower flight deck and a pair was on the quarter deck. The remaining 12 mounts were distributed along the sides of the ship. During her 1935 refit, Glorious received three octuple two-pounder pom-pom Mark VI mounts, one on each side of the flying off deck, forward of the 4.7-INCH guns, and one behind the island on the flight deck. She also received four water-cooled, 50-caliber Mark III machine guns in a single quadruple mounting. Glorious recommissioned on 24 February 1930 for service with the Mediterranean fleet, but was attached to the home fleet from March to June 1930. She relieved Courageous in the Mediterranean fleet in June 1930 and remained there until October 1939. In a fog on 1 April 1931 Glorious rammed the French Ocean liner Florida amidships while steaming at 16 knots. The impact crumpled 60 feet of the flying off deck and killed one seaman aboard Glorious and 24 passengers and crew aboard Florida. Glorious was forced to put into Gibraltar to temporary repairs. She had to sail to Malta for permanent repairs which lasted until September 1931. Sometime in the early 1930s, Traverse arresting gear was installed. She was refitted at Devonport from July 1934 to July 1935 where she received two hydraulic accelerators on her upper flight deck, which was also was extended to the rear. Her quarter deck was raised one deck and she received her multiple pom-pom mounts. Glorious participated in the Coronation Fleet Review at Spithead on 20 May 1937 for George VI before returning to the Mediterranean. Air Group Glorious could carry up to 48 aircraft when first recommissioned, she carried fairy flycatcher fighters. Blackburn Dart and Blackburn Ripon torpedo bombers, and fairy IIIF reconnaissance planes of the fleet air arm. From 1933 until Glorious returned to the United Kingdom in April 1940, aside from a period when refitting in the mid-1930s, she carried 802 Squadron which flew a mixture of nine Hawker Nimrod and three Hawker Osprey fighters, until re-equipping with a dozen Gloucester Sea Gladiators in May 1939. 812 and 823 Squadrons were embarked for reconnaissance and anti-ship attack missions. They flew the Blackburn Ripon the Blackburn Baffin and the Fairy Swordfish Torpedo Bombers and as well as Fairy IIIF and Fairy Seal Reconnaissance Aircraft. When Glorious recommissioned after her refit in 1935-825 Squadron was embarked, initially with Fairy IIIFs, but the squadron converted to Fairy Swordfish in May 1936.